This is part 117 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how ASP.NET Core generates and validates tokens, that is, password reset token and email confirmation token, for example. We discussed generating and validating email confirmation tokens in parts 113 and 114 and password reset tokens in parts 115 and 116 of this video series. Most of the complexity in generating and validating these tokens is abstracted away. For example, to generate an email confirmation token, all we do is call the built-in user manager service generate email confirmation token async method. Along the same lines, to generate a password reset token, again, we use the built-in user manager service generate password reset token async method. In both the cases, we pass the user object for whom we want to generate these tokens. Internally, both these methods, that is generate email confirmation token and generate password reset token methods, call this generate user token async method. The only difference is in the arguments that are being passed. So if we take a look at the signature of generate user token async method, it has got three parameters. The first parameter, is the user for whom we want to generate these tokens. So both the methods pass the incoming user object. And then the second parameter is the token provider to use. In case of email confirmation, it is email confirmation token provider. And in case of password reset, it is password reset token provider. And the final parameter is the purpose string, the purpose for which we want the tokens to be generated. So in the case of email confirmation token, it is confirm email token purpose. And in case of password reset, it is reset password token purpose. ASP.NET Core is open source, so we can see the entire framework source code on their official GitHub page. In fact, I've got these code snippets that we see here from this GitHub page. At the moment, we are looking at the source code of the built-in user manager class. Notice here, we have a string constant and it is set to a value of reset password. So this is the purpose string used by generate password reset token method. And similarly, here we have another string constant and it is set to a value of email confirmation token. You might have guessed by now. This is the purpose string used by generate email confirmation token async method. If we search for generate user token async method, notice there are five occurrences. And here you can see generate password reset token async is internally calling generate user token async method and passing the values for the three parameters. And if we find the next occurrence, notice generate email confirmation token async method is also calling the same generate user token async method and again passing the values for those three parameters. So the point that I'm trying to make is the complexity in generating and validating these tokens is handled for us by the framework. So if we dig through the framework source code, we'll find out it is this built-in data protector token provider class that generates and validates both these token types, that is the email confirmation token and password reset token. This class has two important and useful methods, generate async and validate async. As the names imply, generate async generates the token and validate async validates the token. At the moment, we are looking at the source code of the framework data protector token provider class. By the way, I'll include these GitHub links both in the description of this video as well as on my blog in case you need them. Now let's find that generate async method that actually generate tokens. It has three parameters, the token purpose, the built-in user manager service and the user for whom we are generating the token. In the generated token, the following information is included. The token creation time, the user ID for whom we are generating the token, the token purpose itself, and the user security stamp. All this data is then encrypted using this protector protect method. This encrypted data is then base64 encoded so it can be safely sent over the wire. ASP.NET Core uses the new Data Protection API, in short, DP API for encryption and decryption. Later in this video series, we'll discuss how to use this new DP API to encrypt and decrypt our own application data, like query strings, for example. Next, let's take a look at Validate Async Method. 
As the name implies, this method validates the incoming token. First, it is decoded from base64 and then unprotected, that is decrypted. After the token is successfully decrypted, the token creation time is read from the token itself to the creation time. The token lifespan is added, that's going to give us the expiry time. If the expiry time is less than the current UTC date time, that means the token has expired. So the method returns false and the token is invalidated. Tokens cannot be used after they have expired. The default lifespan is one day. We can change this to meet our application requirements. We'll discuss how to do this in our next video. The user ID in the token is then read and this user ID is compared with the ID of the user the token is being used. If they do not match, then this method returns false, invalidating the token. Tokens generated for a given user must be used only for that user. Next, the purpose in the token is read and compared against the actual purpose it's being used for. If they don't match, again this method returns false, invalidating the token. So a token generated for a given purpose must be used only for that purpose. If we try to use it for a different purpose, token validation fails. For example, if a token is generated for a given user for the purpose of resetting password, it can be used only by that specific user for resetting his password. If we try to use it for a different user or a different purpose, token validation fails. Simply put, password reset token cannot be used to confirm an email address and vice versa. Finally, the security stamp in the token is read and then it is compared against the user current security stamp in the database. If they don't match, again, the token validation fails. To summarize, a token contains the following data, token creation time, user ID, token purpose and security stamp. All this data is encrypted and then base64 encoded so it can be safely sent over the wire. Token validation can fail for a number of reasons. The token is tampered and cannot be decrypted. The token has expired, used against a different user ID or for a different purpose or the user security stamp is different. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.